What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host, Ethan Smith, who does the most. Hopefully, you all are having a phenomenal Christmas Eve Friday. Of course, I will be joined today by Fuji Master 24 himself, Mr. Adam Bittner of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, to talk about what would the Pirates want to have under their Christmas tree in 2021 heading into the 2022 season could be a lot of different things but me and Adam are going to get into some of those things today some of the things that could improve the team heading into 2022 that would be under the Christmas tree and some other things as well hopefully again you like the festive layout for this week and of course next week we will be bringing you an episode uh, uh, three times next week probably Wednesday Friday and then either Thursday or Tuesday so that'll be really fun don't forget about the guest podcast either if you want to be on the podcast just hit me up and i will get you on here thank you all for making me of course your first listen of the day on the locked on podcast network every day you can follow me on twitter at mvp underscore ethan and at locked on pirates you can follow this podcast on apple Podcasts, odyssey spotify google play and of course youtube if you want to come see my beautiful face and with all that said guys let's go ahead and get into this very fun christmas eve episode you are locked on pirates your daily pittsburgh pirates podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and of course everyone welcome back to the locked on pirates podcast adam Bittner joins us today, as I said. Adam, how are you doing on this Christmas Eve? It's actually pretty cold down here, too, today, so uh, I don't know what's going on. I guess the weather decided to switch up on us today. Yeah, not no white Christmas up here like last year, so that's a little bit of a bummer, but uh, um, excited for some chicken Romano at dinner tonight. Chicken Romano? Mm-hmm. I got to go to the Bittner household. Wait a minute. Pasta, too, for any of you Pittsburgh people who might... Who might uh, you might know of it. Uh, we're excited. Awesome. Well, sounds good. Adam's eating good today. Meanwhile, I am working all day today on Christmas Eve, which is kind of a bummer. But, hey, you know, Christmas Eve, everybody celebrates it differently, right? Um, but that's one thing about the Pittsburgh Pirates is like many other baseball teams this off season. Uh, well, every baseball team this offseason, there's not really a lot going on right now. The CBA is still in a deadlock. Uh, talks are not going to start until the beginning of January again, so we probably have about another week, week and a half before we really start ramping up on this stuff. But before that, there was a lot of moves being made, and some teams were getting some early Christmas presents, like the Texas Rangers got Corey Seager and Marcus Emian. Early Christmas presents. The Pirates were giving early Christmas presents away, per se, and letting some go, and their stocking was kind of, you know, falling apart a little bit. <clears throat> but as a Pittsburgh Pirates fan and columnist, what would the Pirates want under their Christmas tree tomorrow if they had to choose anything? Well, I, I you know, in, in the spirit of Christmas and, and just going for the wishes rather than, <coughs> excuse me, only the things that, you know, I think are in the realm of the practical – um, you know, I think they should want Bob Nutting to sell the team. I mean, he just yeah. sold Seven Springs, um, you know, and, and I think I think you're hoping that there's some kind of scenario where maybe the players break the owners to a degree with this lockout, um, excuse me, um, that, that you know, maybe he says, well, this isn't, this isn't really worth it. That I, I can't see a viable way that, that I to fund a winning team. Um, you know, I think a salary floor is, is maybe possibly we've talked about that in, in past weeks. Um, I think that depends upon where the salary cap would be if that was, was something that were to come into sports. But regardless, the, the point is mm-hmm. Bob Nutting does not want to field competitive baseball teams consistently in this city. Um, you know, regardless of what he says, the way he blew up the Pirates at the end of the Neil Huntington era completely um, and has sold this, this, you know, we're in year three of a teardown here and there's really no bottom in sight. Um, the way he sold this is the only way for the Pirates to be competitive is BS, and the fans know it, and that's why they're staying away. And, um, you know, I think the easiest way to bring this team back to, to where people, um, you know, want it to be is to change ownership groups. So that would be the uh, the real true wish I think most Pirates fans would have um, because he's one of the worst owners in sports, and, and he is the root of all of the issues with the club. I think in terms of 
the practical, you know, within within the realm of this rebuild. Um, I think you want to see some starting pitching. Um, maybe some more Tyler Anderson type guys who can come in here on a short term basis. You know, maybe help prop you up. <clears throat> maybe help you compete in a in a um, NL Central that that may not be as strong as as it has been in other years. Um, and and if not, then you know if your team still stinks, as it's likely to to do, then maybe you can sell these guys off for some interesting prospects. Um, so I think you want to see Bob Nunning spend some money to eventually you know get some more assets into the system. Um, you know, those those would kind of be my my impractical and then my practical. <clears throat> yeah, and it's kind of funny with the city of Pittsburgh. I remember whenever the uh, Fenway Group was purchasing the Penguins, everybody was like, "Wow, we're selling the wrong team." Like the wrong team got sold, and that was really kind of the funny joke behind it. And I mean, I agree, of course. I mean, I usually keep the Bob Nutting talk to a minimum on this podcast because, kind of like what you just did, it just kind of makes me angry. So, like, I don't want to just be an angry podcast host all the time when talking about it. Uh, but I do bring it up every now and then. Uh, Pat McAfee, I'm talking to you. How about you actually own up to what you said and buy the Pirates? Go ahead and put a go ahead and put a group together. I'm sure you can find a lot of guys that would probably buy this team. I mean, you'll make a lot of money off of this hat alone. I think people really forget about that, about how many people that aren't Pirates fans just wear the Pirates hat because of how nice it looks and how it fits with everything. They make all the money off of that. They make a lot of money off of that. It really does. But if you, you gave an impractical one, so I'll give an impractical one. One of the things that I would be looking for under the uh, proverbial Christmas tree if I was the Pittsburgh Pirates would be something that they can't get until next October anyway, and that would be a Brian Reynolds MVP. I really think that he could take that next step next year and at least get votes. I mean, he got, like, I think, like, maybe, like, a couple votes this year. I can't remember if he did or not. Uh, but I think he could definitely get some votes next year. But now that he's already put himself on the map as an all-star and you just saw Bryce Harper win MVP and his team was not even really close to the playoffs at all, say the Pirates do improve a little bit in 2022, he has the same exact, if not better, stats, then you could be talking about a Brian Reynolds MVP trophy under the Christmas tree for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Realistically, what I want from, like, what I would want is O'Neal Cruz to really make an impact when he comes up here. Same thing with Rowenzi Contreras. And I talked about it on my podcast the other day with Key Brian Hayes and how he can rise to stardom and all that. I want to see him take the next step as well. I want to see some of these guys actually start taking the next steps to say, I'm going to be an integral part of this rebuild. I'm going to be the guy that you're going to be watching for the next half decade, play third base or shortstop or left field or something like that. I need these prospects to do really well. And, I mean, sometimes – prospects in a way are kind of like a pot or uh, what is it a gift exchange you don't really know what you're getting but you're still getting something right so that's really what i think the pirates would be looking for here and adam before we continue this fun christmas conversation i want to let you know about the wonderful people over at built bar built bar of course is the best tasting protein bar on the market and is absolutely phenomenal during this holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. Built Bar, filled with so much holiday goodness, rich and decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. Make sure you try all nine of their unique flavors or get a mix box where you get 18 Built Bars, two of each of the nine flavors. Like some of those marshmallowy treats around the holidays, you need to get your hands on Built Bar Puffs. They're light, fluffy, and marshmallowy through and through. Different flavors, all covered in chocolate. They taste amazing, and you won't believe that they're filled with protein. And go to BuiltBar.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off of your next order. All right. So we said what we would want under the tree and stuff. All that good stuff about the... You know, Bob Nutting selling the team would be probably joyous. I think if I if I am still the host of this podcast when that happens, Adam, I don't know how I'm going to act on that episode. It might be an it might be an hour and a half long episode where I'm just live and I let people come on and talk. It really might, and I think it would be like glorious. What are your th What are your thoughts on how Pittsburgh media would react if Bob Nutting were to sell the team? 
Well, you know, <clears throat> I think it depends partially on who would be selling it to. And, and I think if it was, um, you know, someone or a group that, that Pirates fans could get behind, I think, you know, it's not going to be Fenway Sports Group because they own the Red Sox, but something like that where you have some big names involved, um, you know, you have LeBron, you have, um, you know, maybe some other sports brands that you can point to and say, well, the, you know, this team's been successful, um, you know, because that's that's kind of how the Penguins sale it depended who the Penguins were sold to about whether you'd be excited. Cause I think, you know, if you're old enough, you remember when the Penguins were almost sold to Jim Balsillie and he was going to move them to Hamilton, Ontario. Um, and so, you know, who knows who ultimately Bob Nutting would, would sell the pirates to. I think that that's part of the issue. Um, but if you, if you sell it to a group that people can get excited about, um, you know, I think the, the reaction would be almost immediate. I think you'd see people buying tickets. I think you'd see people getting excited um, more excited about this rebuild because, you know, regardless of whether Bob Nutting stays or go goes, um, you know, he's, you know, that's, this, this is the direction the team has chosen. So it's going to take some time. Um, <clears throat> but I think you'd see more buy-in from the community. And I think the number one thing kind of referring back to, to your wish list is um, I think you want to see some extensions too. Right. And, and, and maybe, you know, clearly they've been dragging their feet at this point, you know, clearly the, you know, there's there's been deals sought that were not made between um, Brian Reynolds. We've heard that reported. We've heard it with Key Brian Hayes. Um, we haven't necessarily heard it with O'Neill Cruz, but I think there's hope that that, that could get done. Um, clearly, this you know the, the the feet have been dragged on this. Clearly, the Pirates are pinching pennies, and that's the reason that these extensions haven't happened. Um, but I think if you saw a new ownership group come in, that'd be one of the fastest ways to earn some goodwill is, is them coming in and saying we're going to hold on to our guys here. Um, we're not going to be, you know, big spenders in free agency. We're not going to be getting those big, you know, tier one guys. You know, maybe we can pull a Padres and, and, and go grab a Manny Machado or something like that. But um, the one thing we are committing to doing for you guys is is we're going to we're going to keep our guys here. We're going to keep, you know, Brian Reynolds. We're going to keep, keep Brian Hayes. We're going to make the commitment to those guys. And we're going to build the club around them. Um, you know, for, for all the talk about this rebuild, we haven't seen that from this ownership group yet. Stepping, stepping up to keep the best players. Um, you know, are around for a long time. So um, that's that's kind of where, you know, I, I think people would react positively to all of those things if you got a new ownership group that was willing to step up and, and not play around and, and not play hardball negotiation with, with the players that people, you know, the few players on this team that people have, have started to come to love. Yeah, of course. And uh, Mark Cuban, is that you? Sorry. Uh, Mark Cuban, I remember a couple months back, he was actually really rumored to be buying or in, interested in buying the team. Um, but again, I agree with everything you say. Um, realistically, it's a pipe dream, I, th- I would think, though, because uh, with him selling the Spring Resort, I'm not really sure if he would want to sell another asset. I mean, I don't actually know how old Bob Nutting is. <laughs> I haven't really ever cared. So. I'm just kind of like, maybe he wants to retire one day, but he's not really working anyway. He's just owning a baseball team. Um, And he doesn't do a great job at it. But again, with the Christmas stuff too, I mean, this team is almost like, realistically, you know, I I know this is going to be, I'm making a lot of Christmas jokes because it's Christmas Eve, guys, okay? So bear with me here, Adam. You're going to have to bear with me on this one. But Santa Slay had what? Eight reindeer on it, I think. Was it eight or nine? I think it's eight plus Rudolph. Okay, so it's okay, yeah. so it's nine, right? How many? Okay, so there's nine players on a baseball field. Okay, cool. I was getting to this. Um, yeah, Santa Slay can't run without nine reindeer, right? And right now, how many realistically do you think are worthy of being on that sleigh right now? Brian Reynolds, right? Yeah, that's one. Key Brian Hayes, I'd still put him there because I think he's going to do phenomenal this year. After that, there's a real question on who's the third best player on this ball club at this point. That's a really good question. I think if Jacob Stallings was still here, I think you could easily give that to him. But there's plenty of guys around the roster right now that could really stake a claim for being the third best player on this roster, the third best reindeer on the roster, realistically. I mean, you could throw Ben Gamble in that conversation. You could throw Roberto Perez even in that conversation, just with the state of the team at the moment. Kevin Newman was a gold glove uh, finalist. You could throw him in that conversation. 
So realistically, who do you think the third best player on this roster is behind Brian Reynolds and Key Brian Hayes? Well, I, you know, you mentioned Ben Gamble. I, you know, I, I guess I'd mention Yoshi because he's the one person they've deemed to, to you know, worthy of, of signing mm-hmm. to any kind of, you know, contract um, other than, you know, Roberto Perez, who basically just replaced Jacob Stallings' salary on, on the payroll. Um, so, you know, I, it's, it's hard to say because really all we've seen from pretty much all of these guys is a few hot, like a few hot streaks, right? And, and every player goes through those. Um, and some players are, are just better than others. Um, you know, I think Ben Gamble's a good pick. I, I, I think he showed a little bit more consistency than anyone else on this roster. Um, you know, he, he never really seemed to go through the deep valleys that some other players did. Um, you know, and he's, he's a big leaguer. You know, is he, you know, on a good team, is he probably a bench player? Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's a guy that you know belongs in the big leagues. Um, you know, he's, he, he could play for other teams other than the Pirates. He's not just roster chum who's just here. Um, you know, he's a viable big league player. So, um, yeah, I, I'd probably go Ben Gamble if, if, we're, if we're on the, um, you know, if we're on the, on the starting nine front, um, not getting into the pitching. Um, I, yeah, I think David Bednar is the third best player if you're getting into the pitching personally by, like, a considerable amount. Yeah, but certainly on the in, in the starting you know in the starting lineup, I I, I like Ben Gamble a lot. Um, I think he belongs, and 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 that's at this point that's that's pretty much the best you can say about guys on this roster is whether they even belong in the big leagues. Oh yeah, of course. So I think uh, we've established a couple things already. Is Bob Nutting is the Grinch? Uh, the Pirates currently have two reindeer on Santa's sleigh right now, and Brian Reynolds is Rudolph all the way up there by himself. Um, outside of that. You know, the Christmas Christmas holidays are always about a lot of different things, a lot about uh, being thankful for a lot of things, uh, looking ahead to the new year. So as we end today's podcast, what is there to be thankful for as a Pirates fan right now? And then what can we look forward to in 2022? Yeah, I think in, in, in terms of what you're thankful for, it's that <clears throat> we've already got two years of this crap behind us, right? Yes. Um <laughs> You know, I, I think if you're looking at the timeline compared to, um, <clears throat> you know, when they rebuilt under Neil Huntington, I think you kind of hope that this is this year will be the bottom. Um, it, I mean, obviously, you'd hope it's it's not the bottom and that you're on the way up. But I think, um, you know, if if you can if you can have one more bad year and then start to see signs, start to get into this 2011, 2012 years where the Pirates still didn't have winning seasons, still weren't great teams by the end, but they they did things that got people excited. Mm-hmm. Um, they brought people out to the ballpark during the summer. Um, you know, I think that's the best case scenario. And, and so I think you're hoping that, um, you know, this year's the end and you're thankful that that we've gotten through this. And, and honestly, probably thankful that, that a lot of the stuff has been going on while the world has been in such turbulence anyway, right? And, and, and you know, baseball's kind of been able to recede to the, the, the background of what's most important for a lot of people right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when we finally get, you know, to be able to go to the ballpark without worrying about, you know, COVID or any, anything like that, um, then maybe, you know, there's a competitive team to, to go see. Um, you know, so if I'm looking for positives, I think that's where I start is, is that, um, you know, that, that, that we've already gotten through a lot of the teardown and, um, you know, hopefully the good stuff is going to start to happen. Yeah, of course. And then, I mean, Pirates fans, just remember this. I mean, we have the number four overall pick in the draft. They're going to have another top five pick enter this system. And they're going to have a decent bonus pool again in the draft. So Ben Charrington and company, once again, are going to have a lot of work to do in the draft. But, you know, the whole point of keeping a sustainable rebuild is you have your phase of prospects right now which is like O'Neill Cruz, Rowenzi Contreras, Tucapito Marcano, Diego Castillo, those guys right now, right? Then you have your next phase, which I would say would be like Quinn Priester, Carmen Majinski, um, Leo Verpiguero, Nick Gonzalez, guys like that. Then you have the next phase, which is like Henry Davis and all the guys you just drafted, and then you're going to have another phase with all the guys you draft in 2022. So that's the thing that I think I'm most thankful for right now is when I look at the way Ben Charrington is building this team, he's building it really at all levels of the system right now. And albeit a lot of the prospects that I want to see and a lot of people want to see are still at the lower levels of the system right now. 
but that's just baseball. They have to get better over time. They have to grow. They have to get all that good stuff done, right? So, I mean, realistically, we just have to relish in the idea that we get to watch O'Neill Cruz play baseball in black and yellow, at least for now. Um, Rowenzi Contreras, too. And then you have more guys on the way. And more help is on the way. And, um, Adam, I figured ending today's episode would be fun with your favorite Christmas movie quote, as well as where people could find all of your work. That's what I thought how would be a great way to end today's episode. Um, uh, I like I like when um, the the dad from A Christmas Story is yelling about Bumpus's dogs. I don't know if that that fits a quote, but just the way he goes, Bumpus. I mean, it is a quote. It's from the movie, right? Yeah, I, I guess it's only one word, but I, I I love I love the way he says that. Um, and as far as as far as I go, I'm on Twitter at FujiMaster24, as you, you see at the bottom of the screen. Um, my work's also at post-gazette.com. Um, obviously, Jason Mackey, Mike Persak had up our, our Pirates coverage. Um, I'll be working on some um, Steelers stuff this week and then getting ready for the Peach Bowl with Pitt. I'll be working um, for that. I won't be in Atlanta, but I will be um, you know, working on the, uh, on the website and, and keeping everything updated during the game. Um, for you know, one of the bigger pit games of our lifetime. So I'm um, excited about that. And please consider subscribing because um, it really helps us do the journalism we do every day. Oh, yeah, of course. And, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in as always. You guys know you can follow me on Twitter at MVP Ethan and at Locked On Pirates here on the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every single day. My name is Ethan Smith. That's Adam Bittner. Guys, have a phenomenal Christmas holiday. Enjoy time with your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Make sure everything is good. Hopefully all the presents you get are phenomenal. Everything has been phenomenal this year. We are coming back next week for the final week of 2021, my final full year or full calendar year as the host of the Locked On Pirates podcast, or first, not final. I'm not leaving, guys. My bad. I said that way wrong. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful Christmas. I will see you after the holiday with Gary on either Monday or Tuesday. See you on the flip side, guys.